Good morning, everyone. My name is Vanessa Fernandez, and I am a member of the Student Committee of Defense 2012 in Barcelona. I got my PhD in neuroscience five years ago, and now I am a postdoctoral research at ED Labs in the laboratory, cortical networks, and even lab with the Dr. Maria Victoria Sanchez Vives. Today is for me a pleasure to introduce Dr. Daniel Choquet, who will be, uh, will be give a plenary lecture at FENS in Barcelona in 2012 with the title Synaptic Function and Organization at the Nanoscale. Good morning, Dr. Choquet. Good morning, Vanessa. Thank you for organizing this interview. It's really my pleasure. Dr. Choquet is, a, is the lab director of the Interdisciplinary Institute for Neuroscience. And the objective of his group is to understand the dynamic of the process involved during the formation and plasticity of glutamatergic synapses in the central nervous system. Dr. Choquet. During your talk in the Fence Forum 2012, what will be the main point that you leave to the audience? So you know we've discovered about 10 years ago that uh, neurotransmitter receptors are not stable in the plasma membrane of neurons but are in fact diffusing constantly between synaptic and extrasynaptic sites. And this movement of neurotransmitter receptors is extremely regulated uh, by neuronal activity. Uh, we've shown that uh, indeed long-term potentiation, long-term depression, hormones, stress are all factors that regulate in particular the movement of uh, glutamate receptors. And so receptor diffusion in the plane of the plasma membrane uh, is something that we think is extremely important in tuning uh, receptor numbers at synaptic site and is thus uh, one of the key mechanisms to regulate uh, synaptic plasticity and control the density of receptors uh, at synapses. And so what I will present uh, during uh, this talk is actually uh, the analysis at the nanoscale level of the localization of uh, AMPA receptors uh, and the interplay between uh, the organization of the receptors and uh, synaptic transmission. And in particular, uh, what we think uh, is also a, an important parameter of synaptic transmission that maybe has been a little overlooked is uh, the actual uh, diffusion of receptors within the postsynaptic density and between the postsynaptic density and extrasynaptic sites. Indeed, uh, we've shown that exchange of desensitized receptors between synapses and extrasynaptic sites is a process that is uh, extremely important to tune uh, recovery from post-synaptic depression. Thus, uh, depending on the way receptors are organized in postsynaptic densities at the nanoscale uh, is likely to have a very strong influence on uh, the response of a given synapse to high frequency uh, stimuli. And so during my presentation I will elaborate on really what is uh, the relationship, what is the link between uh, this uh, diffusion of AMPA receptors, synaptic function and organization of the overall uh, synapse. In your scientific career, what was the most difficult situation? Your question of uh, what is the most difficult point uh, in my scientific career is not an easy one. Uh, as you know, life or, of a researcher uh, is full of uh, frustrations and uh, difficult moments, as many human beings' life is, I guess. Uh, back uh, at the end of the 90s, uh, when we had uh, started to discover that receptors uh, diffuse in the plane of the membrane, 
uh, it appeared to be extremely difficult to convince uh, the scientific community that that was indeed the case. And uh, our first results uh, showing that uh, receptors diffuse uh, constantly in the membrane of neurons were very difficult to publish. And uh, we submitted that paper many times. It was rejected from all journals. And uh, it took, uh, I think, about four years to be published uh, because there was a very strong resistance from the, the community to this idea that uh, receptors could actually move in the plane of the membrane. And for me, that was really a period of doubt uh, because I was, of course, absolutely convinced of the validity of the results. And in fact, to me, it was uh, completely natural that receptors should actually move in the plane of the membrane. There was no reason why uh, the membrane of a neuron would be any different from the membrane of uh, any other cells, and it was very well established already in other cell types that uh, membrane protein moves. So I did uh, continue, and I guess that's the, the message I wanted to transfer uh, to students is that if you are really strongly believing in an idea, even if there is resistance, even if your idea goes against the dogma, uh, carry on um, doing uh, experiments and convincing uh, your colleagues, because at some point uh, you will be actually able to, to have your ideas uh, coming by. In your research area, what do you think is the missing piece in the proof? So I would say, uh, in answering your question of what is the missing part in uh, our current work, uh, I would be tempted to answer that uh, nearly everything is still uh, missing. Uh, I think we still don't know exactly what is the role of uh, AMPA receptor diffusion in the plane of the membrane in uh, processes of synaptic plasticity. Uh, still a lot needs to be understood on how regulation of receptor trafficking and in particular regulation of AMPA receptor uh, diffusion actually participates to changing uh, synaptic potentiation or synaptic depression. That's uh, one, one first uh, question. Uh, the question that goes with that one is uh, in terms of molecular mechanism. As you know, uh, in the last few years, <coughs> uh, the actual composition of AMPA receptors uh, has appeared to be extremely complex. AMPA receptors have more than a dozen uh, interactors, nearly 10 auxiliary proteins that are intimate parts of the AMPA receptors, to name a few, the TARPs, the cornichons, the Shisa proteins. Uh, and virtually nothing is known on uh, how these different proteins actually regulate uh, AMPA receptor function and trafficking. Uh, so more generally now, I would say, uh, the postsynaptic density is a very complex network of proteins with scaffold proteins, neurotransmitter receptors, adhesion proteins, linking presynaptic sites. And uh, overall, I think uh, how uh, the dynamic organization of all this molecular complex is regulated and uh, how regulation of the dynamic organization of this macromolecular complex is actually involved uh, in regulation of synaptic transmission is uh, a challenge for the next five years or, or so, I would say. Thank you very much, Dr. Choquet, for your time. And see you next July in Barcelona with the talk synaptic function and organization at the nanoscale. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Vanessa.